All right. My name is Krista Signor. I'm the Healthcare System Liaison with the Indian Community Homelessness Coalition, or ECHO. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And if you have any questions after this training um, or any questions in regards to, you know, the, the, the um, intersection between um, the homelessness response system and healthcare, you can always send me an email at kristasignor at austinecho.org. I also like to... Um, our Facebook page and our Twitter account that's managed by our awesome communications manager, Chris Davis, who keeps those really up to date with things that are going on in our community. Um, and um, if there's anything statewide that we need to know about. All right, so I'm going to attempt a poll uh, for the first time here, um, just to gauge who's in the room and what knowledge um, um, we're starting with. Right, so, okay. So you should see a poll on your screen um, and go ahead and answer those couple questions, then we will um, move forward. I see some answers are coming in. Thank you so much. All right, we'll give it another 30 seconds and then we'll wrap the poll up. All right, it seems like we've got most, info most answers in. Okay. Okay, so what best describes your role in the homelessness response system? We have, um, looks like we have a wide range of individuals here today, which is awesome and so exciting. Um, we've answered, um, who do you think is eligible for MAP? Um, immigration status is an eligibility factor for MAP and how confident do you feel currently about connecting community members to MAP? So it looks like we're pretty split um, and it's very exciting to, to know this information ahead of time so that we can move forward. Okay. All right, let's get started. Questions to be answered in this training. So what is MAP? Who's connected to MAP and HMIS or the Homeless Management Information System? Who is eligible for MAP? What does MAP offer? How do we connect community members to MAP? And why is all of this important? So let's dive in. What is MAP? Central Health and Medical Access Program, or MAP. So Central Health is the local healthcare district that connects one in seven low-income residents to quality healthcare. They work with a network of partners to eliminate health disparities in order to reach their, ver their vision of Travis County becoming a model health, healthy community. The Medical Access Program, or MAP, and MAP Basic are local programs provided by Central Health that cover medical care for qualifying Travis County residents. MAP provides healthcare coverage for Travis County residents with low income who are not eligible for or enrolled in Medicaid or Medicare and do not have uh, private insurance. You'll see at the bottom of each of these, um, and like I said, you're gonna get a copy of these, um, but you'll see at the bottom of each of these slides that there are clickable links for more information on each section here. So just wanted to point that out. All right, who's connected to MAP and HMIS or the Homeless Management Information System? All right, so this is total coverage in HMIS. Um, this is what's reported and documented in our Homeless Management Information System. So on the left, you'll see any insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, and MAP. In yellow, you'll see unknown 
orange is not connected and yes, blue is yes connected. It's important to note these numbers are based on clients with enrollments overlapping from 9-21-2020 to 9-21-21. Some of the big takeaways on this slide that we wanna talk about here are for any insurance, there's 46% of our clients with no healthcare coverage. Um, and so that's, you know, there's multiple factors that could go into that, um, but we definitely, you know, since there's almost half of our clients are not connected or it's not reported that um, they're connected, um, we definitely wanted to move forward with this training and support our community. Um, additionally, map at the bottom, you'll see that um, almost 9,000 are unknown, um, over 21,000 are not connected to map as, a, as it relates to the HMIS um, system. Um, and 328 are yes. Any insurance in HMIS, race, ethnicity, and gender. So on the left, we'll start American Indian or Alaska Native is 53%, Asian, 51%, Black, 59%. Data not collected is at 14%, which is something that we're definitely looking on and we'll talk, uh, looking at and we'll talk about more in a second. Hispanic, Latino, 54%. Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, 46%, two or more races, 60%, and white, 47% connected to insurance. On gen, uh, for gender, uh, female, 59%, gender nonconforming, 47%, male, 50%, um, trans females, 33%, trans males, 48%, and unknown at 3%. So we've definitely highlighted a couple of pieces on here that we want to, um, that we want to look at the, into the data more about um, as possible capacity building efforts um, to make sure that all of our community members have equitable access to comprehensive healthcare. It's important to note again that these numbers are based on clients with enrollments overlapping between 921-20 and 921-21. And this is any insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, MAP, et cetera. Okay, now specific to MAP coverage in HMIS. So with the numbers that we mentioned at the beginning um, being low, this is in this is this is correlates exactly with that, that we have less than 3%. Um, you know, on the race, ethnicity, and gender sides connected to MAP. This is not um, MAP uh, central health data. This is our data. So they, you know, for who's connected to MAP with that's experiencing homelessness. So that's important to note. Any insurance first MAP in HMIS um, for age. So some of the, the specific areas that we want to look at here between 18 and 64 as our areas of making sure that these individuals are connected to healthcare coverage. Um, in HMIS, we know that 86%, 76% are um, for, so under 18 or 86% and over 65 or 76% with insurance. And um, that's because of the um, of social security benefit access. Um, you see the same on MAP coverage for age, 18, 20, 18 to 64, again, is that um, area that we'll want to target. Not everybody is to, um, and we'll talk about that in a second, but these are just the areas that we're noting in HMIS. All right, workflow for documenting MAP in HMIS coming soon. I want to recognize the importance of documenting MAP in HMIS to support our community members, case managers, and homelessness response system. With that, the Housing for Health team um, is working with the HMIS department in HMIS. What is HMIS? Sure. Um, HMIS is the Homeless Management Information System. All right, so with that, the Housing for Health team is working with the HMIS department and HMIS work group to create a standard workflow for documenting MAP in HMIS. So please keep an eye out for that information coming down the pipeline in the near future. All right, so let's dive into, into MAP eligibility. Who is eligible for MAP? All right, so who's eligible for MAP? There's three main components. Um, they live in Travis County, you're uninsured and at or below 200% federal poverty line. For more information on this, there's a link at the bottom and the poverty guidelines, which are updated yearly, are on the right side there. And that um, on the right side of the picture, you'll see my dog, Heidi. Um, and she says, uninsured or unsure and uninsured, make sure. Okay. Um, that's definitely the central health you know, motto. Um, if you're unsure and uninsured, please apply. Please have community apply. What does MAP offer? 
All right. So as we've discussed, there's medical access program or MAP, and then there's medical access program basic um, or MAP basic. I'm going to dive into first medical access program or MAP. What does MAP cover? It covers primary care, intensive case management through a medical management team, dental services, pharmacy services, behavioral health, post-acute care, urgent care and hospital services, and specialty care. Um, I have included the medical access program member handbook in English and in Spanish at the bottom. Um, and that is updated um, annually, I believe. What are some of the benefits MAP members can access? So specifically within primary care, there's adult primary and preventative health care, pediatric primary and preventative health care, gynecology services and women's health services, excluding OB. Um, immunizations, cancer screenings. For dental services, there's exams, cleanings, x-rays, fillings, tooth removal, dentures, and oral surgery. Behavioral health is therapy, counseling, and psychiatry. Psychiatric inpatient care, in intensive outpatient services, crisis residential services, emergency stabilization, crisis extended observation. Hospital services include inpatient and outpatient care. Post-acute care is physical therapy, skilled nursing, home health, recuperative care for members experiencing homelessness. And then there's a whole um, list of specialty well that I, I won't attempt to read out each of those names because I don't wanna mess them up. <laughs> but um, the, uh, there's, you can see here that there's a wide variety of uh, benefits to being on MAP if you're uninsured. Um, and are below 200% of the federal poverty line and live in Travis County. Who accepts MAP? So primary care, for primary care, it's community care clinics, Lone Star Circle of Care, People's Community Clinic, UT School of Nursing. For convenient care that treats minor illnesses, including but not limited to the cold, flu, sore throat, allergies, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, rashes, et cetera, community care walk-in and Lone Star Circle of Care. For dental locations, it's community care um, clinics, um, Lone Star Circle of Care, and People's Community Clinic. For urgent care, which is similar to convenient care, but also treats more serious illnesses and injuries requiring stitches or x-rays, um, that's fast med urgent care or next care, um, next care urgent care. All right, map contacts. So for questions about the application, help applying benefits, lost ID card or billing, um, there's the customer service number listed there, 512-978-8130. For medical questions or medical management team is at 512-978-8300. Um, if you can't reach a doctor, they have a 24-hour nurse line at 1-855-880-7019. And if you need help with prescriptions, the pharmacy helpline um, is available at 1-855-880-7019. And again, these, this PowerPoint will be out for everyone. So you don't have to note all of this. All right. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about um, MAP Basic. I see there's a couple things in the chat. Looks like Whitney's got it. All right. MAP Basic is what we're going to talk about now. If I can get my computer, there we go. <laughs> All right, what does MAP Basic cover? So MAP Basic covers primary care, uh, most medical services, including behavioral health, pharmacy services limited to prescriptions written by clinic providers and integral care providers, dental services, and specialty care. Again, the MAP Basic uh, member handbook is in English and Spanish at the bottom of this slide. What are some of the benefits MAP Basic members can access? Primary care, it's adult primary preventative health care, pediatric primary and preventative health care, gynecology services and women's health services, excluding OB, immunizations and cancer screenings. For dental services, it's exams, cleanings, x-rays, fillings, tooth removal, dentures, oral surgery. For behavioral health, it's therapy, counseling and psychiatry. And for specialty care, um, there's uh, similar um, services there as listed before. Um, MAP basic member handbook, again, is at the bottom of this in English and Spanish for more information. Who accepts MAP basic? For our primary care, it's community 
Clinics, Lone Star Circle of Care, and People's Community Clinic. For dental, Community Care Clinics, Lone Star Circle of Care, People's Community Clinic. And for MAP Basic Contacts, it's the questions about um, application, needing applying, benefits, lost ID card or billing. For customer service, that number is listed on this slide as well. And then for the pharmacy helpline, that number is listed here as well. All right, how do we connect community members to MAP? This is the big question, right? How to get connected. So anyone can complete this application for a client with their permission. Um, there's three main ways. You can do it online, through your smartphone, or by calling. Um, you can apply over the phone um, at 512-978-1381. And we will, um, Central Health will uh, mail the completed application, all the forms the individual have, if the individual has a mailing address. A big one on this, um, a big one on this slide that I, is that if you go to apply for map.net, um, you can apply. The big thing is, and this new that's rolled out this year is that you can apply through your smartphone. So if you're an outreach worker or from your computer and you're in the field and you're speaking with a client and they're uninsured and they need um, to be connected, you can go ahead and get them connected via your smartphone to um, sign documents with your finger on the screen. Um, the camera will open, allow you to take pictures and upload. It's an amazing feature that Central Health has rolled out and something that we want to make sure that everyone's aware of, that you don't necessarily have to call in or have a mailing address that you, there are, and we'll talk about the documents you'll need in a second um, and the workarounds for that, but that you can literally use your smartphone and get it rolling in the field. Um, I do want to note Central Health's customer services team is available for any questions, um, and it's 512-978-8130. And then also, once you remember, um, if you, uh, for, MAP, um, for MAP members, you can connect a client with MAP to, serv uh, to MAP services at the MAP electronic referral on the right side. That's the medical management team. And you can be connected that way. So let's dive into that a little further. Required documents to submit with the application. So the standard documents that Central Health requests are proof that you live in Travis County, and that's current Texas driver's license, utility bill, uh, mail postmarked in the last 30 days, any proof of US citizenship for your household members, birth certificate, legal permanent resident card, passport, or other documents, um, picture ID for all adults in your household, state issued driver's license, foreign ID, um, USCIS uh, document passport, um, proof you are a, um, you are the parent or legal guardian above all children in your household. So that would be birth certificate, adoption papers, legal guardianship papers and court documents. But um, Central Health does recognize we have um, our community members who are um, unsheltered and they have um, provided workarounds for that. So pro tip on the right side for community members living unsheltered, use the below documents when applying. So there are certain do documents that are listed here that will meet the requirements um, for it's my understanding they will meet the requirements for these, um, these sections. So the applicant residency statement and the birth certificate and ID form. Um, so additional required documents are proof of any other healthcare benefits for which you've been approved, been denied, or having a pending application, proof of your household's income, and other forms. Um, with that on the right side, again, um, Central Health has provided um, these documents for our community members living unsheltered um, to use um, when applying. So this is zero income statement or other earned income statement. Okay, and we're just gonna watch a quick video about this process. Please let me know if you cannot hear this when I turn this on. Central Health has established an online website for Travis County residents who are low income and uninsured to apply for the medical access program MAP and MAP Basic from the safety of their home. The website is applyformap.com. It is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can apply from your smartphone device. Applicants can answer questions, submit documents, and complete the entire eligibility process at their convenience. 
Step 1. Before you begin your application for the Medical Access Program map, you will need to gather some documents and information that will help us determine if you are eligible for a map. They include proof that you live in Travis County, proof of your household's income, picture IDs, and others. Step 2. Start the application process for MAP online or by calling 512-978-8130, whichever is easiest for you. Either way, you can follow the application process in English or Spanish. Step 3. Follow-up. During your application process, you may be asked to provide some additional information. Make sure you submit the requested information by the deadlines provided. Step 4. If your application is accepted, you will receive your personalized map card and instructions handbook in the mail within a few weeks. You can immediately begin using your map coverage to get care. If you are not eligible, don't worry. We'll send you information on other health coverage programs. Step 5. Make sure that your map coverage stays current. You'll see an expiration date in the corner of your map card. Set a reminder to renew your map card at least 30 days before that date. If you have any questions, call 512-978-8130. Right. Oh. Okay. All right. So it's important to note that you can apply for a map from your smartphone, computer, and telephone. Immigration status is not an eligibility factor. Clients can add a note to their application for case managers to pick work for them. So if somebody doesn't have an address, this would be an ex. Um, instructions for that would be client to write a letter on any paper saying, I, client name, on application date, give my permission to case manager name to receive my MAP information and pick up my MAP card, must be signed by the client. You can upload that to the electronic, um, to the when you're doing it on your phone or on the computer, you can upload it that way. Um, another important thing to note is to start renewal process 30 days prior to coverage ending, and that there's a link on there to how to read a MAP card if you need that additional assistance. Processing time takes about two weeks, and if approved, benefits kick in immediately, which is an amazing um, feature of this. What else do we need to know? So community care, healthcare for the homeless, mobile walk-in information. So community care, healthcare for the homeless has a mobile financial screener, screener named Dante. If you have someone who is in need of coverage quickly, Dante is the guy. Clients are seen on a walk-in, walk-up basis, um, so we always advise that they arrive as early as they can during the time range Dante is there, as his list fills up fairly quick. Clients are given, cover given coverage and provided their new MAP uh, card same day. The process generally takes about 10 to, 15, 10 to 25 minutes, um, and it is that almost all of the clients seen and issued coverage are experiencing homelessness and have no forms of ID. Um, the Healthcare for the Homeless mobile team also provides this service at Camp Esperanza, Community First Village, and Care Connections Clinics, but on an appointment basis for those who are already connected with those sites. So it's important to note on this, um, on this slide that uh, the mobile clinic on Tuesdays is the Trinity Center from 9 to noon. Um, on Thursdays, they're at sunrise from 9 to noon, and Fridays at the Arch from 1230 to 330. It's also important to note um, this current schedule listed is for reference. However, schedule changes often to fit the needs of the community and new sites the team receives. Um, for up-to-date location details, uh, contact Lauren Christensen um, at lauren.christensen at communitycaretexas or tx.org. Um, she is an awesome resource. You can always reach out to her about that. Um, she did mention that Thursdays is their most consistent day at sunrise. So I did want to note that. All right. If you're interested in connecting with Central Health, um, for agencies wanting to become a formal community partner, um, you should contact um, this individual at um, their email below. Um, and new em employees at an existing partner agency should contact Michelle about additional training um, and that her email is listed as well. 
Um, our current, it's my understanding that Kermit, current, not Kermit, um, current formal partners include the Sobering Center, Integral Care, and EM, EMS, and Austin Recovery. As it relates to our homelessness response system. So why is all this important? Okay, according to the CDC, health equity is achieved when every person has the opportunity to attain their full health potential and no one is disadvantaged from achieving this potential because of social position or other socially determined circumstances. Health inequities are, elected, are reflected in differences in length of life, life, rates of disease, disability and death, severity of disease and access to treatment. So all that is to say, health is the most important piece. Research shows individuals with health care coverage are much more likely to access health care than those without coverage. People experiencing homelessness in our local Austin Travis County community are living with serious medical diseases um, and diagnosis such as congestive heart failure, chronic kidney disease, cancer, and many others, as I'm sure you're aware. Ultimately, access to health care coverage can increase health outcomes, housing instability, or housing and quality of life for community members and ultimately save lives. All right, I want to open the floor before we do our final poll um, and have you know any questions that you'd like to come off mute or anything in the chat we want to discuss further and invite Kit, um, the Senior Director of Eligibility Services at Central Health, if um, you have any questions for her, if there's anything that um, you want to clarify, Kit, or anything I misspoke on, um, please feel free to um, use this time for that. I just want to say, I see some more chats are coming in. I've been trying to answer a couple of things that have come through. Um, Krista, I just want to say you have done an amazing job with this presentation and I, I really appreciate your um, willingness to, to get out there and do this. It's amazing to see over 100 people participating. Um, and I shared this with you personally, but I'm gonna say it out loud, like your slide deck, I'm just in awe at how great it looks. Um, it's, it's like you've hired a professional to do it. So <laughs> excellent job. Um, and yes, I am happy to answer. Uh, how do you want to do this, Krista? Do you want to do you want to review some of the chats I've already answered, or should I just pick up with some of the things that are coming, the new ones that are coming through? Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, if, if we want to, uh, first off, thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate that. Um, the um, yeah, if, if if there's anything you want to touch on, and I'll kind of look through the chat and see if there's anything that maybe we wanna bring back up or, and if anybody wants to come off mute and ask something, that's a, you know, raise their hand, that's a, you know, we can do that as well. What, what um, I'll leave that to you, Kate. What would you like to, how would you like to move forward with this? Well, how about, I'm gonna just start with the new ones that I haven't typed answers to. And if you sure. wanna look back while I, you were presenting, I said I was answering and then folks can ask follow-up questions if they didn't um, get their question answered through the chat. If you help somebody apply online, Holly, and you want to pick up their card for them, you can pick up cards at Southeast Health and Wellness Center. Um, again, it's real important that we have that authorization that the client has given written permission for you to do so, but you can go by Southeast Health and Wellness um, Monday through Friday between eight and five and pick up cards there. Uh, you know, Luis, I, I, we, there's a whole host of medical durable DME, durable medical equipment um, that is available to MAP members. I am probably not the best person to get into the specifics of that. I don't know if I could answer your question about a custom equipment or custom wheelchairs. We do partner with Ascension Seton and Ascension Seton does a lot of our authorizations around medical equipment. Um, so if you have an individual that is needing 
something specific and you're running into some barriers, I really encourage you to reach out to our case management team. They are the ones that can really navigate any sort of challenges, you know, accessing appointments or accessing equipment or questions like this. that have health savings plans, not insurance. Um, so if you're talking about they have a, a savings a plan where they have money set aside to help the, cover the cost of care, then no, that is not considered health insurance. And they um, absolutely can apply for MAP and or MAP basic. Um, there are some clients that are in parole. Are they eligible for MAP? Um, yes, absolutely. We have several partnerships. We actually work with the Travis County Jail. We work with um, some of the other criminal justice system programs, the SMART program, the Austin Transition Center, um, and they uh, can submit applications on behalf of Travis County residents. And if eligible, we can enroll them in MAP. Unfortunately, this is a Travis County program. Um, we are funded by Travis County tax dollars. So um, individuals living in Williamson County are not eligible for our programs. Someone asked earlier about CCHC, which is Community Care Sliding Fee Scale Program. Residents living outside of Travis County can access primary care and specialty care that is offered at community care on a sliding fee scale basis. They would get enrolled in CCHC. They have now changed that name. It's, it'll say SFS 100 or SFS 150. They get a card. Um, but and there is a county indigent program in Williamson County. I think it's called Wilco, Wilco Cares. Um, but it is much more limited in what it provides than the MAP program, unfortunately. These are great questions. Um, they really what, are. Yeah, these are, and I appreciate you being here answering these. Um, as far as the, the flu vaccine, does MAP cover um, the flu vaccines? Is that a part of immunizations? It does. Um, right. They just need to have an appointment with their um, primary care provider mm -hmm. to get it. Okay. And why have some people been um, changed from MAP to MAP basic? That's a question from Dennis or Denise. So that is all based on income. Mm -hmm. um, as Krista said, we accept uninsured Travis County residents living 200% and below the federal poverty level. And we look at different criteria for different programs. And, you know, it was really important for Krista to say, you know, we don't look at immigration status. It doesn't if you are not a US citizen or a legal permanent resident, that does not prevent you from getting enrolled in one of our programs. Um, but we do have different income criteria based on your US residency status or based on your age and disability status. So for our individuals that have been approved for disability, but they're waiting for their Medicare to kick in, we accept individuals up to 200% of the federal poverty level. Or if you're over the age of 67 and you're ineligible for Medicare or you're a non-citizen and can prove that you've lived in the country for 20 years, you can get enrolled in MAP up to 200%. Most US citizens and legal permanent residents qualify for MAP up to 100% of the federal poverty and non-citizens, non-legal permanent residents up to 50%. But if you don't qualify for MAP, you would qualify for MAP basic. So again, and, and, and I, I so appreciate Krista, she, 
I hammered this into her and she, she got it, man. She got it quickly about, you know, it's not your role and we don't want you all to try to make those self-determinations and not have someone apply because you're not sure what they're eligible for. Please help people apply and then we will route them, put them in the right program and then connect them if they're not eligible um, for our coverage programs. Um, I have a question. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so it's 200% below the federal poverty line and uh, less. So for clients that have no income at all, are they eligible and how do they prove that they don't have income? Yeah, there's a form that we require um, individuals to sign. It's basically a self-attestation that they have had zero income for the last 30 days. Um, and if they complete all the other criteria, um, they more than likely will be enrolled in the, in the MAP program. Thank you. And where can we find that form? This is this this is the zero income form, correct? That you're that's correct. Yeah, it's going to be in this PowerPoint. It's one of the documents, one of the pro tips that are you'll be able to access this. I'm going to send this PowerPoint out today, um, and then you just go into that, um, go on to the part where there's a document, and it says zero income statement, and those are the ones that um, um, Kit has um, um, supplied us with. Yeah. And they are, Tessa, it's my understanding they are still accepting phone applications. Um, Kit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Individuals. Um, and it might be a little bit tricky for, you know, the uh, individuals experiencing homelessness that ha don't have a mailing address. Because over the phone, what we'll do is our team members will ask every question that's required. So all the questions that are on the online application, they would go through verbally. All of our operator staff um, do speak English and Spanish. Um, and we, if it's a language other than English and Spanish, we have access to the language line. So we would go in and ask all the questions, answer them, get the status, sort of understanding what the um, income is of the household, explain all the needed documents and forms. And so a good example is if somebody called us over the phone and they said they had zero income, then our team would go ahead and send out automatically that zero income form to them to complete. We do include a address stamped envelope in that packet so that individuals can return, easily mail back to us all the documents um, that we need to receive, but they can also upload them online. Um, they can drop them off at either Southeast Health and Wellness or the Northeast Health Resource Center. So there's kind of multiple ways folks can get uh, documents back to us if needed. I have a follow-up question to my earlier question. How do we get them switched back to um, regular map from basic map now that they're not working? So you just reapply. Um, I will say if somebody um, applies and it's been less than 30 days and then they submit a new application, that's not always reviewed. Um, so if something has happened, um, then I would suggest that, you know, within that 30 day period, I would suggest that they call our call center. Um, you know, it's, I know you all know this, but I, I feel the need to say it. I mean, it is really important that um, all applicants are truthful. They do have to sign an applicant responsibilities, um, stating everything that they've given us is true. And they also provide us authorization to do income checks through the Texas Workforce Commission. We haven't instituted that, but that is something that is being looked at. And certainly everybody that applies is um, giving permission for us to do that. 
It looks like we have another question from Tessa at the top that I missed, and I apologize. Maybe we please let me know if you've already answered. But for patients needing inpatient psychiatric admission under MAP, would providers or case managers call the customer service number to find who accepts MAP, or is there another place to find that information? Um, the inpatient psychiatric care is done through um, Ascension Seton, the Shoal Creek. Um, it's we don't have an extensive list of of providers that do the inpatient psychiatric care. Again, um, I would reach out if, if you're having some challenges, reaching out to our case management team is um, a good place to start with figuring out how to best connect clients that you're working with. And how would we contact the case management team? Is that the uh, customer service number? No, that's one of the numbers. It, they do have a different number and Krista did provide that in the um, PowerPoint presentation. I, I don't have it memorized, so I don't wanna say it in case I don't have it right. Thank you, I appreciate it. Sure, if I can back up. Sorry, it's going to be a little. Just quickly trying to get there. I was just going to wait until you sent out the slideshow, to be honest <laughs> with you, Krista. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Krista, because I almost said 8,000. And I was like, no, I know it's not 8,000. So it's 8,300. <laughs> I've been monitoring the chat, so I didn't want to like move my screen and mess anything up but I was like I just closed it so I was like this some this is something I can do so um it looks like medical management team correct it's 512-978-8300 press one and then two yes they also and Krista I will um I'll send this to you before you I'll try to get this to you before you send out the PowerPoint presentation uh, they do have a form that be, can be filled out mm -hmm. to do referrals and get connected to case management. I believe it's on here. Is it Is on it there? Fish? Good. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Great. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, you and I have been over this PowerPoint so many times. I think we... <laughs> Yeah, no, this is perfect. Yeah, so there's an electronic referral there as well that you can commit once the, or um, complete once they're a member um, that you can. I see Kaylee, uh, Kaylee is on the line um, with her hand raised. Do you wanna come off mute? Yeah, just thanks, go. Krista. Yeah, yeah. you do. Um, I, sorry if this was already answered, I was driving, so I hopped on late. Um, but for clients who, get like approved for the map card, but are like waiting to receive the physical card, can they like still go to whatever pharmacy or clinic and like get services without having that physical card? They should be able to. Um, it, it, it takes, we tell people that it, they should wait two hours from the time that they're determined eligible. So, you know, think about this prior to the pandemic, you know, the vast majority of our applications were done in person with one of our specialists. And we would tell folks, okay, your, your map is active. They would be able to give them a card right then and there, but give it about two hours to show up in the pharmacy system um, so that they can verify your enrollment. You know, they're, they're, I, I've been known to hear of challenges if somebody, they can't find them in the system if they don't know, um, you know, they potentially give them the raw, you know, a, a name, a nickname rather than the name that we have entered in the system. So in theory, they should be able to, but I, I know that it, it doesn't always work. Okay, thank you. Great question. Let's see what time we're at. We're at 12.50, so maybe one or two more questions if there's, and then we'll wrap up with our poll. Uh, um, and Krista, I'm just going to say, because Julie Weeks, hi, stranger. <laughs> um, 
I did. She asked in the chat about going to Walgreens for the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, I am not aware, aware that we would not necessarily cover a, vac a flu shot that is given at Walgreens. Okay, so the flu shot. Thank, thank you. Walgreens just provides vaccines at a lot of our events that we do. Um, and and we just wondered if they could show their map card and it would count for insurance if they could get it paid for. It, it's not a PCP, it's like at a food distribution or a school event right. where they're doing vaccine clinics. Out are in the are they asking for insurance cards when they do those? Yes, because the free vouchers are all gone. And gotcha. so now they have to okay. file to get reimbursed for the flu vaccine. Okay. Somebody's got to pay for it. So we yeah. just wanted to know if MAP would pay for that vaccine. I will double check that. I believe the answer is no, um, but I will certainly bring that up to our COO at that that's you know a possible <laughs> avenue that we may need to look at if we can do something about that. That would be great. Thank you, Kit. Of course. So there's a couple more in the chat, it looks like. Um, and I apologize if I'm missing any. Um, start with this one. If a client at the jail is applying for MAP and doesn't receive the physical card in time, can they still use benefits? I apologize if this has already been answered or a version of this has been answered. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, once somebody is enrolled in MAP, they should be able to access benefits. Again, we know there are some providers, you know, it, it, it all depends on the front desk person or the provider. They get really sticky. They want to see an actual card. They all have the ability to look up eligibility criteria and see that that person is active. Um, but, you know, the individual can always call our call center and we can mail out a card um, or they can come by our uh, Southeast Health and Wellness or the Northeast Health Resource Center and we can reprint a card. Or I should also put a plug, um, we always have a table at the pop-up um, resource events that EMS puts together, which are wonderful opportunities for us to um, really catch people that are experiencing homelessness. So. Um, please, you know, when those events happen, you know, and you know folks that need coverage, send them to them um, because we will be there and we can do applications and print cards on site. Um, we can do card reprints, all of that. That's awesome. Um, let's see, is there a time frame? Um, our clients have to wait before they receive assistance with the application process. Is there a wait list? That's one of the one of the last questions. Um, I, I, so when somebody submits an application, I, I, there's not a, there's not a wait list. So it's just all a matter of how you apply. Um, on applications that we receive online, it takes us about seven days before we work that application, just because of we're getting through the queue. Um, if that individual has submitted all of the documents that are necessarily, they would be enrolled right then and there. Mm -hmm. If something is missing, then of course we call the client and mail a letter telling them what's missing. And then of course we can't do their eligibility until they provide that missing documentation. We do have in-person appointments now. Those are being scheduled about a week out. So I would say, you know, it's about seven to 10 days before we start processing, whether it's an in-person, a mailed or an online application. Um, to get through, but so I hope that answers what you were wanting. Yeah, I think that's helpful. Um, and I think that we're at, let's see, 12.55. So just to respect everybody's time and Kate, I know you're incredibly busy too. So um, 
I just want to start wrapping us up a little bit um, and say thank you so much, Kit, for being here and for all of your help um, with um, collaborating and putting this PowerPoint together for our community, um, for our homeless system service providers, and just your ongoing support. I really appreciate you. Um, and also want to send a big shout out to Lash Andrea Dwyer, who has looked at this PowerPoint several times with me and has been um, in the waiting in the wings today um, to back me up if uh, my internet went down. So I appreciate that. Um, well, did you have any final things that you wanted to say, Kit, before we go to the um, the, the poll or? No, I did I just super quickly, because please let me know if you're enrolled in MAP or MAP Basic, you can go to any of our contracted providers. Whoever's being told that they have to go to the provider on that card, that is not necessarily correct. So um, I'd love to hear if you're hearing about that a lot um, so that we can dispel that myth. And I'm going to say again, Krista, you rock. I so appreciate working with you. And I think, you know, you're a rock star for really putting this together and bringing this out to, to the community. Thank you, Kit. I appreciate that. And if you guys have any questions or anything that y'all are, you know, wanting to, um, you need any follow-up information, you know, you do have the numbers for Central Health on there, but I'm also happy to help and try to navigate this and find information for you guys. So I know you're incredibly busy doing great work on the ground and in our community. So, um, you know, if there's anything that you're hearing of or anything that you need, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll do what I can to help. Um, hey, Krista. We just yeah. want to say from Echo that you did awesome. Thank you for always putting together wonderful presentations for the community. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Very lucky to have be surrounded by such great uh, community members and such great uh, partners. Let's see. All right. All right. Final poll. And I'm so excited that I actually got to use the poll feature for the first time. So thank you all for bearing with me during that. Um, all right, before we go, I'm gonna launch a poll. So who's eligible for MAP? Check all that apply. If you're not sure if a community member is eligible for MAP, what is the recommendation? Um, how do we connect community members to MAP? Check all that apply and so on. So I'll let y'all answer those, I'll be quiet. All right, we'll give it a few more seconds. Looks like we're nailing this last survey or poll. I do you wanna note that um, immigration status is not an eligibility factor for MAP. It is not an eligibility factor. So that would be false. And I know that's kind of a tricky, the way I worded that was kind of tricky. So you may have already known that, but I just wanted to reiterate immigration status is not an eligibility factor for MAP. And clients can add a note to their application for their case manager to pick up their card. Just go ahead and end the poll and show you guys the results. All right. So who's eligible for MAP? Live in Travis County, uninsured, at or below 250% of the federal poverty line. 
No one said, I'm not sure. That's awesome. Um, if you're not sure if a community member is eligible for MAP, what is the recommendation? When in doubt, apply. You guys nailed it 100%. Um, how do we connect community members to MAP? Check all that apply over the telephone, online via smartphone or computer, community care mobile drop-in days, exactly. Immigration status is not an eligibility factor for MAP. Clients can add a note to their application for case managers to pick up their card for them. And how confident do you feel about connecting community members to MAP now that you've completed this training? Um, very confident at 69%, semi-confident at 29% and 1%, not too confident. For the 1% not too confident, feel free to email me. <laughs> I got your back. We're gonna, we, we got this. Um, I would like to receive training in the following. Looks like you guys are interested in all of these. These are pulled from the registration. Um, and so definitely more trainings to come in the future. Um, again, I just wanna say thank you so much um, for being here and for your willingness and your eagerness to learn about this and connect our community members. Um, and as always, housing is healthcare and the Housing for Health team is here to support you. So thank you so much again for being here. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Lush Andrea. Uh, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. All right, thank you so